Здравствуйте! Меня зовут Вера Алексеевна Полякова Норвуд. Hello and welcome to our Russian class. My name is Vera Polykova Norwood and I will be your Russian instructor. I am a native of St. Petersburg, Russia, where I grew up and got my education and became a foreign language teacher. I have been living in the United States for eight years and I have been teaching the Russian language in a distance learning setting. I'm very excited about the opportunity of being your Russian teacher this year and it really is wonderful that there are so many of you out there willing to learn the Russian language. But let me ask you this question. Why Russian? Why did you choose the Russian language? Is this a good language to study? And the answer, of course, is yes. This is a great language for you to study. And I hope that you will really enjoy the process. But now let's talk a little bit about why. Why Russian and why now? How many people around the world speak the Russian language? And the answer is 290 million people speak the Russian language. This figure is much bigger than the population of Russia. The population of Russia at this time is estimated at about 145 million people. But there are many more people outside the country of Russia who speak the Russian language. So when we count everybody in, we come up with 290 million people. Together with English and Chinese, Russian is one of the three major world languages. So here's your answer right here. It's a great language for you to study. Then, do you know how many students, how many high school students in the United States study the Russian language? Only 14,000. Now think of how big this country is and uh, how many high school students are in the United States. And only 14,000 study the Russian language. So this puts you in a very select very elite group and this will single you out you will be different you will be the learner of the Russian language Russian is a very good language for college since there are only so few students studying it and also Russian has a reputation of being a difficult a tough language to study it's good for college. It looks excellent on your high school record, record. And colleges like to see that. Colleges see good people out there. And you will be a member of that select group that colleges will go after. So that's a very, very good language for you to be involved in. And U.S. businesses need people with the Russian language skills. Russia is a country is now undergoing a process of tremendous change, of opening up, setting up private enterprises and businesses. And the United States as a country, as a leader in the business world, wants to go into the country of Russia and do business there. And that's why U.S. businesses need people who can communicate with the Russian people in their own language and also they can communicate well within the context of the Russian culture. And in this class, we will focus our attention not only on the language, but on the culture as well. And uh, it is also worth mentioning that studying Russian is an enriching cultural experience. Do you know how old Russia is? Sometimes I will be referring to events that occurred in the 10th century. So Russia has a millennium of history, even more than that. And we'll be talking about things that date back to the 9th century, to the 10th century, to the 11th century. You will really be amazed of that wealth that will open up in front of you. And I would certainly like to encourage 
you not only to attend our classes and study and do homework, but read, read about it on your own so that you can really uh, be touched by the Russian history and this will enrich you so much. And as I have said, I have been teaching Russian for eight years in a distance learning setting and my students have been scattered all over the United States and each of them really enjoyed it. So that will be a marvelous experience for you and it will give you a better understanding of the Russian culture and the Russian people. So I hope that we will have good time, we will have a lot of fun in this class. But Russian being a difficult language means that you have to stay organized. You have to keep working hard and you have to stay organized. So every day in class, please have your textbooks, all your materials, pen, pencil, notebook. You cannot show up in class and have nothing with you. No, that is not right. You will have to have your textbooks, you will have to have your notebooks, you have to have pen, uh, paper, and pencil. And I hope that we will really be able to stay on top of everything and things will proceed very nicely for us. What might also help you if you try to keep all your materials together. Get yourself a nice three ring binder and that's where you ought to keep all your Russian materials. So if you need to check on something that we already st uh, studied, you know where to go and you know where to find it. Okay, well this takes care of housekeeping. Now let's uh, see how much knowledge about Russia you already have. It's always to know, it's always nice to know where we are, where our starting point is. So let's check out our knowledge about Russia and uh, the Russian culture. Our first question is, what is the capital of Russia? The capital of Russia is A. Moscow, B. St. Petersburg, C. Novgorod. And the capital is Moscow. Moscow is the capital of Russia. This is a big and really beautiful city. A city the population of which is more than 10 million people. It has a tremendous history. It is really lovely. So Moscow is the capital of Russia. Let's move on to our second question. And um, the president of Russia is? Which one? And the correct answer is Parasha. And now let me ask you, how many time zones are there in Russia? 10, 6, or 11? If you don't know exactly, take a guess. 11. Russia stretches through 11 time zones. That's really impressive, isn't it? Arasha, let's continue and uh, tell me the name of the Russian currency. Yen, ruble, mark. Ruble. The name of the Russian currency is ruble. And Russian money comes in different sizes and different colors. We also have coins. So look at this very colorful mixture of bills and coins. That's Russian money. And the name of the Russian currency is ruble. And now the language question. How many letters does the Russian alphabet have? Hmm? 33, 28, or 21? How many? 33. The Russian alphabet is composed of 33 letters. And let's look at the Russian alphabet. As you can see, it is composed of some letters that you already know, and also there are characters in it that you have never seen before. But we will approach the study of the Russian alphabet very methodically, and very soon, very soon, within two or three weeks, you will be able to read 
any Russian word. Reading Russian is really much simpler than reading English. English has mute letter combinations and there are six different ways you can read the letter A. Nothing of this stuff in the Russian language. So you will actually be amazed at how soon, how quickly you will master the Russian alphabet and how soon you will be able to read Russian and read it really well. Of course, part of it depends upon you. You only get out of it as much as you put into. And if you approach it seriously, you will very soon be enjoying reading Russian and speaking the Russian language. So let's plunge into the study of the Russian alphabet. So how many letters do we have there? 33. That's right. The Russian alphabet is very often referred to as the Cyrillic alphabet. And we call it the Cyrillic alphabet in honor of Saint Cyril, a Greek monk who lived in the 9th century, who lived for very many years among the Slavic tribes of Eastern Europe. He studied their languages and developed the writing system that today is used by several Slavic languages. Russian is not the only language that uses the Cyrillic alphabet. The other languages that use the same writing system are the Ukrainian language, the Belarusian language, the Bulgarian language, and the Serbian language. So once you have mastered the Cyrillic alphabet, you hold the key to reading all those languages. But let's just concentrate our attention on Russian. What we are going to do with you, we will split the Russian alphabet into six letter groups and we will study each letter group separately. And the first letter group that we will look at today is composed of these six letters. Look at them very closely. Don't they look familiar? And indeed they should. Some of the characters in the Cyrillic alphabet are of the Latin origin. And you can find these six letters in the Western languages, in the Western alphabets. But let's go over this letter by letter. A, Y, K, M, O, T. Not only do these letters look alike, they also give you exactly the same sounds as the corresponding letters in the English alphabet. And you never knew that you already know six letters from the Russian alphabet. Okay, so let me comment on each of these letters. Look at this. This is the first letter in the Russian alphabet. A. Ah. A. Ah. That's the, the name of the letter and also the sound that it gives us. Ah. We always pronounce it this way, no matter where it occurs in a word. Ah. That's the letter Ah. The first letter in the Russian alphabet. The next letter in our group is Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. Think of the English word Yes. Cut the S sound. This is what remains. Ye. Yeah. The letter Ye. Yeah. And then comes the letter K, which gives us the K sound. K. K. And uh, what is this? Name it for me. M. That's the letter M. And of course, it gives us the M sound. M. Then comes the letter O, O, just the simple O sound. And uh, to complete our first letter group is the letter T, T. It gives us the T sound, T, T. Now that we know six letters from the Russian alphabet, let's start putting them together so we can start making Russian words. And uh, look at our first one. 
this is the first word any child says in Russia and it is mama mama that's the Russian word for mom mama хорошо and by the way хорошо means very good so our second word is кот кот and this is a nice little animal that people like to have in their houses a cat кот кот notice that in the Russian word we have the letter O in the middle кот a cat кот say it in Russian one more time кот very good very good let's take a look at this word it's a little bit longer now it's composed of five letters this is a drink that the Russian people enjoy very much cocoa or hot chocolate cacao 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 and one more time cacao very good and now we will take a look at a word which is composed of all the six letters all the six letters that we studied today are in this word and what does it say Kameta. Kameta. now the corresponding English word is a little shorter what is it comet Kameta. Kameta. No? that was very good those were your first four Russian words and now let's take a look at a few pictures and I want you to identify what you see in these pictures in Russian so this is our first picture and uh, who is this lady mama mama very good and now let's look at this little animal and what is it Court. Court. and how do we name this drink in Russian cacao cacao well you are doing very well but let's take a look at all these four words on one page and I will read them for you then I'll give you a second and I want you to read them out loud in your classrooms mama court cacao kameta now go ahead and read these words out loud in your classrooms mama kot cacao kameta very good very good and now the difficult part pick up your pens and pencils paper we are going to learn how to write these letters in cursive yes we are going to learn Russian cursive writing okay is everybody ready so let's begin we shall start with the letter A the first letter in the Russian alphabet and this is what we do this is the capital letter R we start right above the line and notice how nicely I go down in this little curve now I'm going up and I need to make the top pointed I'm coming down to the line and then I'm doing this nice looking hook the letter R is complete let's try again right above the line go down in a nice curve go up top is pointed 
go all the way down and make this nice looking hook the letter R one more time that's it and now let's do it a little bit faster the letter R nothing to it and uh, this is your lowercase does that look familiar? well it certainly should the letter R and this is the letter M the letter M we start the same way a little above the line we're coming down in a nice curve going up and my top needs to be pointed now I'm down on the line again and I'm curving going up my second top is pointed I'm coming down and curving on this line and I'm out of it that's it the letter M notice the two tops are pointed so let's try again a little above the line we're coming down curve on the line go up pointed tops and it's complete and let's let's try one more time again we're starting right above the line right here and we're coming down on the line curve go up pointed top go down curve go up second pointed top go down another curve out of the letter M let's connect these two letters so we can write the word mama and I forgot to mention that the lowercase is just a smaller version of this So let's write mama mama again we are beginning right above the line down on the line curve our tops are pointed now we are connecting to the R getting out of the letter R and remember we have to stop right above the line and now we are into the letter M our tops are pointed second letter R and you have completed your first Russian word in cursive mama let's do this again M connecting to the letter R now we are connecting to the letter M and we need to stop right above the line that's where the letter M begins second letter M ah mama see this is easy mama okay. let's look at the letter K so we start here our top is pointed we go down make this little loop and then we complete the letter K this is the capital letter K on the lower case The lowercase is just a small version of the capital letter but notice the difference between the English and the Russian letter we do not have this tall um, element on the letter K it stays the same size everywhere We need to look at the letter O, which is really very easy because it's the same as the letter O in English. And the lowercase is just a smaller version of it. Okay? And uh, this is the letter there. This is the letter there. We start with this element, then the middle element, then the third one, and we need to crown it all with this. That was the capital letter there. Let me do this one more time for you. We begin with this then the middle element then the third element and the crown and look at the lowercase 
Does this look familiar? It certainly does. It certainly does. Just don't get confused with the English alphabet and the Russian alphabet. Keep them separate. Now, if I want to write court, this is what I do. Court. Let's do this one more time. Court. Court. Cacao. Ka, ka, o. And now let's do kameta, the word that has all the six letters that we learned with you today. And I'm connecting now to the letter M, Ye, Te, and A. And you notice that this letter Ye looks just like the English E, right? This is the capital letter. And this is the lowercase. This ought to convince you that the Rus Russian alphabet and the Russian language are really very learner friendly. There's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to, to be afraid of. But let's take a look at a few pictures again. And remember, you identify everything in Russian. So how do we call this lady? Mama. And uh, this nice little animal is Kot. And uh, finally, how do we call this drink in Russian? Cacao. And we even know a word which is composed of all the six new letters, kameta. So, mama, kot, cacao, kameta. Your first four Russian words. Very good, very good. Keep practicing with the letters. Do all the follow-up exercises. And very soon, writing those first six letters will be no effort at all. Very good. Хорошо. And now it's almost time for me to say до свидания, which is the Russian word for goodbye. До свидания. Next time we will continue with the next uh, group of the Russian letters. Спасибо. Thank you. До свидания.